Hi, everyone. I'm Pao. I'm a games producer at Coolmath. I help manage the game, so I do game acquisition where I look around the internet for good games to license for the site. And lately, we've been getting into doing game design in-house. So you'll see in this video, we're going to show you how we do that for Copper Royale, which is um, yeah, one of our favorite games and one of the most popular games on the site. So we're excited to uh, share this with you. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm also a games producer at Cool Math Games and uh, the lead producer on Copter Royale. And I'm really excited to show you a little bit of behind the scenes about how we make changes to Copter Royale and all the uh, cool things we added for season two. And I'm John. I'm the games director here at Cool Math. As you guys may know or may not know, we uh, license most of the games on the site. So Papa's Pizzeria, Clicker Heroes, most of these games are made by other developers, and we enter into an agreement with them where we get to host their games on our site, and we work with thousands of developers this way. Uh, we have been making more and more of our games in-house, though. Copter Royale is one of those games, and we're really excited about it in particular because it's the first game that we're really starting to iterate on and release content periodically. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is season two of Copter Royale, which went live about a month ago, and get your feedback, talk to you about the changes that we made and why we made those changes and how we go about designing and making changes in our games. So here's Alex to tell you a little bit more about that. With our season two update, we wanted to add some new features and address some previous concerns about how the superpowers were working together. Um, one of the biggest features that we always wanted to get in the game was uh, really cool customization options. Um, and we're really happy with how that turned out with the new skins, badges, emotes, and trails. Uh, it's definitely a little intimidating when you see a level 50 rainbow trail chasing you down. Uh, I think in that way, the, the skins are working well and that they, they kind of let you express yourself, show off your experience, and um, give, give each player a little bit more personality than just their their copter flying around. On the gameplay side, we also wanted to address a couple of lingering uh, superpower problems, the biggest of which was the repulsive shield. It was by far the strongest power in terms of looking at the data. Uh, and so for that reason, we wanted to make sure that we brought it down so that it was more in line with, uh, with the other powers. Wait, repulsive shield was too good? Like, yeah, it actually turns out that 35% of games were being won by a player with Repulsive Shield, which was far and away the highest uh, compared to all the other powers. 35% is pretty pretty insane. It was like one in three, right? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that was problematic about Repulsive Shield is that it was just so unfun to go up against, right? Uh, it, it wasn't quite an I win button, but you could use it so often and it stayed up for so long that it was tough to find a moment to attack the player who was using a repulsive shield. Exactly. exactly. When, we, when we thought about this power, what we liked about it was the image of somebody shoots a rocket at you and then you turn on your repulsive shield right in the nick of time and block the rocket and send it back at them. Uh, and that's sort of the goal. But in practice, with the five second effect time, we saw people turn on the repulsive shield and then just charge right at their opponent, uh, kind of willy nilly, and and just use it as like an aggressive weapon. Uh, whereas we had, we had imagined it much more like a defensive timing based weapon. Um, so what we decided to do was to reduce the effect time, and we wound up bringing that down from five seconds to two and a half seconds. Uh, which turned out to be a pretty good change and brought its win rate much more in line with some of the other powers. Yeah, I'd be okay. curious to hear what people think of the new Repulsive Shield. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we have that helps us address uh, updates to the superpowers is this handy little dev system uh, on our private cool math server. In this server, I have a bunch of options you can see here, uh, namely the superpower options, uh, previous superpower, next superpower, recharge superpower, um, and most importantly, superpower settings. 
So in the superpower settings, that's where we can make the changes to the actual powers and see how they're working. Uh, so you can see for each power, there's effect duration, reload duration, and then a number of parameters uh, which are dependent on the power. So uh, for something like the dash superpower, for example, you can see the uh, effect duration, the reload duration, and then parameter one uh, is how far you can dash. It's not just that we can update the effect and the reload, we can also update how far you actually go every time you use the dash power. And so what we did after we looked at the data from our 2.0 update, we saw a couple things that we weren't quite where we wanted them, particularly the repulsive shield was still a little bit too strong, the lightning was too strong, and there were a few powers that were still too weak and just had never really been as strong as we hoped they would be. So the first way that we make changes is by going, figuring out what we want to change, then going in and sort of testing by feel, but then we also use stats to verify our changes are having the effect that we were hoping for. A nice example of the way we use the stats is that, as we said, Repulsive Shield, it was up at 35% before our season two update. Um, we took the effect time down from five to two and a half seconds, and that lowered the win rate down to 19% but it was still the number one power. So even after that huge nerf, it was still the strongest power in the game. And so for our 2.1 patch, which we released in June, we went ahead and made the reload time on the Repulsive Shield a little bit longer, just so you had to be even more strategic about when you used it. We finally brought it down to 12%, and it's only the number three power in the game, which is much closer to where we want it to be. Yeah, yeah there are two superpowers now that have effects that are not what they say on the tin. Mm -hmm. They actually include abilities that we don't mention because they're not really part of the primary piece of the superpower, the primary aim of the superpower, but we've sort of creatively found a way to make them a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna talk about two of those. We realized that the way to get the power stronger was also to give it a little bit of a bonus ability. The first one I'll talk about is the shrink power, which makes you a tiny copter, which obviously helps you with your evasiveness, but we still weren't seeing very much success for players who were using Shrink. And when we thought about this, we said, well, what can we do to make it make the player even more evasive when they're using the Shrink power? So what we did with Shrink is we gave it a 1.3x speed boost. So you go 30% faster whenever you're using it. Uh, and that's going to help players become more evasive. Did you originally intend it to be a, an, yeah, a defensive power or, um, or an offensive one? Yeah, I mean, the thing about Shrink, there's definitely a little bit of a meme quality to it. So we never imagined it being one of the strongest powers in the game. But overall, I think if you're using Shrink, what you want to do is put it on and then start dancing around your opponent's bullets. You know, you're small, they can't hit you. And so the speed boost really helps players kind of achieve that design goal. Another power that we saw players to figure out how to win games with it was the homing shots power. You might not even know it existed because you almost never see anybody using it. The way it works, uh, you know, the way we wanted it to work was that you, you'd shoot a bunch of shots and then you'd try to kind of curve them into your opponent. And as they're flying back and forth, you can chase them down with the bullets. But in practice, you know, players move faster than the bullets do. So it just wasn't hard for players to keep dodging even with the, the homing power activated. To lo the first thing we tried for season two was to lower the reload time so players could use it more often and just have this kind of kind of more chances to make it valuable, but we still were, were just not seeing any success. So we decided we needed to make a more drastic change. So what we came up with is that we decided to make the bullets faster while you have homing shots activated and to make them last longer, which not only lets you kind of chase players down with these curving shots, but also gives you more chances to catch up to them because the bullets are lasting longer. Uh, and I think this is really the key change that has now made it much more relevant and much more powerful than it ever was before. And I think the new, this new, these new settings make that much more, make, make it much more fun to use and really feel like you have a, a worthwhile superpower when you activate it. So after our June update, we looked at our stats again, and now the powers look really 
uh, well balanced. We're seeing six powers all at the top of our win rate chart, and they're all between 11 and 14 percent. So that's a really nice balance uh, where we have a lot of different powers that feel really viable and strong at the end of the game. We were also thinking of maybe having a superpower design contest where uh, you all can can submit your your ideas for superpowers because we want to open it up and I'm sure you all have great ideas for this. Another thing we were kicking around was like a, a PV, PVE element of the map, kind of like in MOBAs where you have like dragons and barons and Roshan and stuff like that. Probably giving also a higher level, uh, maybe a higher level cap, just to give players who've maxed out that rainbow trail and uh, have gotten the flying saucer uh, more to play for, among other things. So yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. You could send ideas there or even on on social. Yeah, social media is a great way to engage with us. We've been making more and more of an effort to interact with our community there and participate in discussions with our community, get feedback from you guys. So uh, thanks for sharing all the feedback you've shared on Copyright so far.